Welcome to this week's BC Sampile, or Sampile as we've come to call it. This week, we're going to continue with our investigation of platforms and, and what we can, can look, uh, look to for moving forward from the, the chaos that's behind us. So we have uh, some good folks from Duda. Uh, Adam is going to present. Uh, Kendi is also there, and Russ is also available for questions. If you have questions, if you could just uh, throw them in the chat. We do have ample time for a q a session at the end but uh in this case we're, we're not going to we're not going to try and answer them during the session because it gets choppy so we'll take it away Adam. all right thanks you guys happy to be here um we didn't have enough time to get russ's headshot in this agenda but um you can see our faces here and our contact information we'll distribute the uh, the agenda deck to the to to craig and to to dave afterward um, so a little bit about Duda and um, how we're differentiated in the market. So we, we launched as a company as a, primarily as a mobile-only site builder and site converter back in 2010. Uh, now we're a fully white-label responsive website builder for um, our web professional community. And we have over 12 million sites um, that our agency partners have built in the platform. So we're really proud of that. Um, we have 5,000 partners worldwide. 50% of our customers are international. So for all of the the, uh, the Australian community out there, I know there's a lot of you. Um, we serve everybody around the world. And we're, we have about 80 employees right now and we're growing to around 90-ish by the end of the year. Um, we're headquartered in California, so in Silicon Valley, south of San Francisco, but we have offices all over the world and, um, and can service everybody um, internationally that way as well. Uh, our, our core mission, you guys, is, is really we don't sell direct to consumers. We, we only you know, sell through what we call the channel, which is, is really um, through our agency partners. So we provide you know, our agency partners with the most effective and in innovative tools to be able to sell and build and manage their websites for their clients, generally small, medium businesses at scale. Right? And so hopefully you know, um, through this agenda today we've created for you, I'll be able to kind of highlight how Duda is differentiated in the market as a website builder. There are many of them out there. And we specifically serve the web professional community. So I'll be highlighting some, I think some features and functionality that you know, we've heard from the BC community are meaningful for them, but would love to hear in a Q&A session afterward, you know, what we're missing or what we didn't highlight and, and we can answer those questions as well. So I'll be talking a lot about two core concepts of how we really feel like we're very differentiated in the marketplace, which is our team collaboration features, um, uh, how we share assets across teams, um, and then our client management um, features, uh, how we kind of white label the, the entire platform under your own brand and, and expose that to your customers, um, how we reduce our site build times for our partners, so really talking about a core concept of speed, um, this this concept of smart sections which i think you guys will really like which are how you create your own exclusive assets on the platform and share them across team members um, our website personalization tool which is really like a conversion driver for for duda and really a, a big differentiator for for you um, our widget builder which is our answer to maybe web apps and then we can also discuss api and anything else you want to discuss um, afterward so without further ado I'll hop into the platform here and we'll get going. Let's go see if I can minimize this window here for Zoom. Okay, great. Hopefully everybody can see this. I might zoom in a little bit here um, so people can see my dashboard. So I'm logged into my corporate account here. Um, you can see this is my corporate account and what you're looking at is essentially our dashboard. This is where you'd manage all of your websites that are kind of in design. Um, and you can label them and tag them according to maybe your design process. Do not delete, needs customer approval, et cetera, and filter across those websites. And at any time after you build a website on Duda, you can actually save that website as a master theme or a master template that you can clone or duplicate over and over again. Um, if you're particularly proud of the structure that you've created or the theme, maybe you're serving a particular vertical or a customer segment, you want to reuse a particular theme over and over again, we try to make that very easy for you to use in Duda. And so as I mentioned here, we are a white label platform, you know, for agencies. And so on our platform, you can wrap everything up under your customer, like the, the entire platform under your own domain, brand the editor under your own, you know, with your own logo and your own color scheme so that when you expose it to your 
your clients. They'll see your logo, not Duda's. And this is where you get API access. We can talk about that in a bit. But what I want to jump into here is it's really how you manage your team permissions and your client permissions. Because on our platform, we're a cloud-based platform, but you can literally have an unlimited number of team members and, and, client, um, and clients on the platform. So here you can see I'm in a, a users and permissions uh, section here. And, and this is where you'd associate any kind of website that you have in design with a client. And uh, what's really unique here about Duda is I'm, I'm doing this manually, but I can manage the client access to the platform. I can restrict access or, or grant them access to the website that I'm building for them or the websites I'm building for them. And we have really robust uh, permission settings for them. So I can grant them really restrictive access to the blog where they can still feel like they're controlling their content and build out their content. Or I can grant them access to the e-commerce module only and they can get access to the management portal and manage their, their inventory online. Um, I can even give them you know, access to the code base, to the HTML and the CSS, which we give you access to as well, or even restrict access um, to where they can only edit blocks of text like paragraph elements or title tags or even swap out images, but they can't republish, right? So we have a really um, granular level of access you can act, grant your clients. The same thing goes for the team permissions. So the whole concept of a team on Duda is how do I get, um, whether I'm a one person freelancer or I have six people on my team or 20 or 50 or 100 people on my team, how can I manage their access to the platform? And we have these pre-built out like team permission settings, but I can simply add a team member here um, and associate them with these pre-built sections. Or um, I, can, oops, I can create my own custom group and then manage their permissions accordingly as well. And we have different settings here for the team, like API access, et cetera. So I want to highlight that as well. Um, we, you know, different from BC, obviously, is, is we give you tons of resources as our partners. These are white label resources like sales collateral and product training and stuff like that. So you can self onboard and get started quickly. And we also will talk about some priority support that we offer you as well. But um, aside from that, I'm going to hop directly into our editor here and show you kind of like a manual flow of, of building out a website on Duda, um, collecting assets and, and, and really kind of taking the whole site live and publishing it. So um, the way we think about our flow manually, and many of these steps can be automated using our API, is to create a responsive site here from within my dashboard. And I'm taken to a templates page here. And this is where, as our partner, you'd select any number of templates or themes. Uh, these are starter themes that we give you really used for design and layout inspiration. Um, these are all uh, responsive themes, uh, optimized for all device types, and they're all gonna, uh, they're all optimized to score in the kind of the 90s um, for mobile friendliness, desktop and mobile page speed um, for Google's, kind of ace Google's page speed algorithm here. We give you, um, they're all verticalized by small business vertical. And the thing I'd like to highlight here is that you can build out your own master templates or themes that might align with the verticals you serve again. Um, these will be all exclusive to your instance of Duda, and you can again clone them and reuse them over and over again. Um, if you want to use one of Duda's starter templates, you can create your own templates off of a starter template. I'm just gonna go uh, select a template and jump into our editor here. And so I'm going into our site builder. Um, and again, I'm th these sites are all going to be responsive and optimized to ace Google's page speed algorithm, which will be really great for conversions. Um, and so when I jump into the editor here, you'll see here on the loads, you'll see a basic structure in, in this user interface right here. So um, <laughs> that's a new pop-up. Um, you'll see along the top here that um, I can see uh, what this uh, website or this template or theme will look like on a on a tablet, not a mobile device right here. And um, you'll notice here that <clears throat> we're using a hamburger menu with this like pop out menu. It's very common on on most mobile devices. What I'd like to really highlight here uh, is our design and layout flexibility right out of the box. So. Really, our templates should be used for design and layout inspiration. They're all going to be op optimized for 
excellent like native and organic SEO and, and Google's out like page speed algorithm. But within the Duda editor, we give you tons of layout flexibility right out of the box. This is going to be really critical for um, Google's mobile first indexing. And, and so within this one uh, layout here, this hamburger menu, this pop out menu, I have tons of layout options, right? And even further beyond that, if you like this, this general, uh, the structure of this, this template, you can go into our global design settings and, and manage the global styles of the website very quickly and easily in our platform. You can manage the global text, like the, the fonts for H1 through H6 tags and manage the styles of the buttons globally very, very quickly, right? And even beyond that, getting into the layout, what we give you right out of the box is a way to, to really change the look and feel of this core template very quickly. And let's say, make this, this mobile version of this website much more tappable, right? That doesn't look all that pretty, but uh, showing the flexibility there. And that's not gonna affect, obviously, the, the desktop version. But again, if you don't want this hamburger style menu, you can go into the global design settings and, and quickly change the look and feel of this, this desktop site to be, to have like a, you know, that top nav very, very quickly. So I've, I've changed the look and the feel very quickly of this website, which I think is gonna be really critical here at Duda. Um, jumping into our, our widgets here. So out of the box, I know this is gonna be really critical for, for you coming from the BC world. We give you 65-ish um, in-app native widgets. They're all meant to be, they're all meant to, to allow you to design any small medium website or most small medium websites out of the box. So a bunch of, of widgets that are designed for conversions are our content or contacts form or a legion form is one of our mo more robust widgets and I'll show you that. Um, integrations with, with you know, SEO platforms like Yext, um, HTML widgets where you can embed any kind of HTML code. Um, you know, map elements, image sliders, photo galleries that give you tons of design and layout flexibility. Um, all sorts of layout and design widgets. Um, and then some like native integrations with folks like Yuck, OpenTable or, or Yelp. Um, Visita for online scheduling, Yext, I've already highlighted that one, right? Social elements. Etc. and then some blogs. So this, I think this, this template has a blog, so we're showing those. Um, what I'd like to do is, is uh, jump in here and, and drop in this like contact form or legion form and show you the flexibility of the widgets and how easy it is to design in, in Duda. So I'm dropping in this contact form. We'll take on the global styles of the site. And what you can do is, um, you'll notice when I drop in this widget into the header, um, it's opening this content and design palette here. And you'll see this is a common theme across all of our widgets. So we give you easy access to edit the content of this widget and the design of this widget. And so um, our lead gen form is, is really flexible out of the box. And what you can do is you can add any field. And you can see here the flexibility we're giving you um, for this content. You can make any field a drop down or a radio button or checkbox. Um, you can, for the folks in EU, you can allow them to opt in before they actually um, submit the form um, to align with GDPR regulations, right? And um, I can manage my submission recipients very simply with, uh, by separating the email recipients with a comma. I can, I have a lot of like submission actions, so I can manage the, the messaging upon a form submit and a redirect very simply, where I want that form to redirect to, adding a tracking code for conversions, and then we have some out-of-the-box integrations um, with Google Sheets and MailChimp and, and Constant Contact. But this form shouldn't stop there. You should be able to use a webhook like Zapier and, and push form submits into a CRM, like Salesforce or Sugar or Zoho or something like that, or even into Slack, right? And then under the, the design aspect, like you can really change the look and feel of this widgets by clicking on design and you have a lot of design flexibility there. And then the common thread here on any widget in our platform, we're going to give you direct access to the HTML and the CSS of that particular element in the website, right? So, you know, 
you shouldn't see Duda as, as, as a standard drag and drop site builder, or DIY, like consumer grade site builder. We're giving you a lot of design and layout flexibility here um, by giving you access to the CSS as well and the HTML. Um, moving on here, let's see here. So um, another way we, we really save you time um, in the site build process is uh, we have a built-in um, content scraper. So you can scrape content from a Facebook page or an existing URL uh, directly into the site, and we can manage all of that structured content within our content library. Um, but you can also collect content from um, your customer by using our integrated content collection form um, that's totally white-labeled under your own brand. So um, whether you use an intake form outside of Duda or you're using Dropbox to gather assets from a client, um, you can use our content collection form and replace that. And um, you can uh, require your, your customers to, or clients to upload images, upload their assets. And when I do that, if I'm uh, dropping in, let's say my Google voice number, right? Let's say I'm dropping in a Google voice number. Um, and I submit that. Uh, once that content is submitted, the Zoom interface is a little weird. There you go. Boom. <laughs> uh, I can refresh, and you'll see that um, I'm going to be capturing some of the assets here, that, that content in the content library. And uh, I'll show you what I can do with one of the widgets and how it kind of uses the content, that, 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 uh, the content library here. One moment. So in my widgets here, um, once I drop in a click to call, let's say I'm dropping in like a, a CTA, like a click to call button, it's going to automatically detect that there is a phone number associated that, that a client has submitted that you've entered into the content library and it's going to say, okay, great. Do you want to use that, that phone number for that, that CTA, which, uh, which is going to be really useful for your team. I think um, we touched on how your, your team can collaborate on the platform, iterate on the design really quickly. Um, and I'd like to show you our, our smart sections um, feature in the platform. So if I hover between any two rows of content, um, you're gonna see this, this sections, the smart section kind of um, pop up here. And our answer to you know, themes or templates or iterating on designs really kind of changing the look, of, look and feel of a core template is our smart sections. So within team sections, we give you over 200 um, starter sections, and these should be used for a design and layout inspiration. They should be used to iterate on design. They should be used to change the look and feel of a design to align with any kind of request from a customer. So I can rifle through sections that are very common to any small and medium business website. A, an intro section or a features or products um, sections or a services section um, or an about us section or, or how I highlight um, my team um, and, and show my team on, on, a, on, a, on a web page right here. So we give you over 200 like assets that you can start with, um, but so you can change the look and feel of a website very quickly, but you can also create your own sections, which is really critical. So creating your own sections that are exclusive to Duda and exclusive to your instance of Duda is going to be really key to, to being able to, to serve your segments that you might serve over and over again. So let's say I've built this row of content in Duda and I want to click on that row and, and save this row at save this section or save multiple rows or even select a full page. I can select this entire row and say, this is my philosophy section. I can categorize this section of content or this row of content. And I can even set a permission level on this to, to make this private so only I can see this and I'm not sharing this with my teammates. I can actually um, set the permission so I can actually share this section with my teammates. And once I've done that, I've created a section that's exclusive to my instance that I can reuse over and over again and now I can share this with my teammates, or I can even expose it to my customers. And the way we think about that is if you go back to your homepage, 
uh, your, your dashboard in Duda. In the team section, I can go to my team sections now. And this is where I'm managing my assets on the platform that I can reuse over and over again. And I know, I, what is it, Dave or Craig was really excited about this? Yeah. I know Dave and Craig were really excited about this. Um, I know Barbara's really excited about this. What's going on here? I'm, uh, I think I'm not Adam, I have found the Zoom interface can, can get in your way sometimes and cause some problems for sure. So it might just be the Zoom interface. Yeah, absolutely. I'm zoomed out. Can you guys see? Yeah, great. So I've shared this philosophy section here. You can see the permission setting here. I can clone this and reuse this over and over again. I can preview it. So you can actually send this to a customer and you can get approval for that section um, and then add it to the template. You can even add it back in. And um, you know, our goal here is to save you time in that site build again and, and allow you to kind of iterate in that design over and over again. So I appreciate you jumping in there. I think lastly, what I'd love to show you guys is our, our personalization feature. And, and the way our, our partners use our personalization feature is to really drive conversions. How are you gonna create a really ultra personalized and, and dynamic experience to your site builders based on either how you segment your, how your clients segment the market, what kind of conversations you're having with, with your clients on the promotions they wanna run, and so what we do is we give you this website personalization feature. All the, this is all included you know, as a, as a Duda Pro or an agency partner. And what you're looking at here is, is pre-built rules or what we call recipes on how you can quickly deploy a pop-up or detect if visitors are nearby and send them some sort of personalized experience or coupon or special. Uh, detect if they're, they're, re, they're returning visitors and, and then pushing a coupon on them or something like that. Even link up, you know, use our, our UTM or URL parameter builder and, and link this up with a campaign and then serve up some sort of dynamic experience. Um, and it's very easy to use. So I'd, I'd rather just build our own and show you how quickly you can build out your own rules or triggers and then serve up some sort of, uh, you know, personalized experience. So when a, a client goes to a due to website, we're going to know a lot about that site visitor. We're going to know what device type they're on. We can even know their, their geolocation and, and within a 50 kilometer radius and serve up some sort of like pop-up or notification bar. We can know if they're coming to the site during happy hour or on some sort of recurring like a holiday like Mother's Day or, or Valentine's Day um, and, or even link this up to a campaign. And, and so I've, I've selected three triggers, like a device specific one, a geolocation trigger and time of day. And I can make this mobile or tablet or or desktop specific. Let's make it mobile specific. And let's use, let's see, uh, we'll just pick some sort of um, city here. We're in Palo Alto, California right now. So as I'm building out this logic, you can see the logic is built out. So any visitor on a mobile device coming to the site from Palo Alto, California on a particular time of day or, or date will get some sort of special experience on a, on a Duda website. So if I deselect all day, it'll kind of default to business hours and I can change the state and, and run a special promotion for let's say a week and then set like a, a time zone. And so if and only if these triggers are met right here, we can deploy an entirely new row of content, a new section, uh, even hide rows or we can um, deploy a notification bar or a pop-up or execute some sort of JavaScript or a special effect. So if I build out a notification, this one would be very simple to kind of, kind of deploy for you. It's very simple to edit. So it's like two, four, one special, and then link up some sort of hyperlink here. Um, change the color really quickly and, and to some really bright color, right? Um, and and then click next. So um, this could be like your notification bar. These kinds of things are, are, are really difficult to deploy in the WordPress world. 
Um, I know it's really unique to Duda. Um, and what we can do here is we can like preview the, uh, we can preview these special rules, right? So if I go back to my personalization tool here, I can go preview this and see what it looks like on, on a mobile device. So any mobile visitor in Palo Alto will get some sort of like notification bar. It's really special. So we see like a, an increase in conversions by up to 70% when we actually deploy those, when our, our, our agency department partners use our personalization tool. Um, aside from that, you guys, you know, out of the box, we're getting, we're giving away, we give our agency partners, you know, free SSL certificates and renewals with every single uh, public site. That's going to be great for conversions when uh, Chrome kind of, you know, um, imposes the HTTPS, um, HTTPS warnings on, on sites that don't have SSL certificates come they, October. They just announced in September that non-secure sites are going to display a warning if not secure. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, we have a really cool feature, like a progressive web app feature. We can talk about that. Um, great integrations with Google Analytics, adding and tracking codes and getting access to the header HTML is very simple. And then we give you full access to the uh, code base as well. So um, in developer mode, which I'm showing you here. And we give you direct access to the body end file to add in tracking codes and, and the header HTML um, right here, the head section as well, where you can drag, drop in tracking codes. So I think that's, that's the, the overview I wanted to show you today. Um, a little bit about how you collaborate as a team. Um, oh, this one right here, how you can expose the, the website, you know, to your clients. As um, you know, our, our, our platform is totally white labeled. So any site you can send to a client for preview um, under your own brand, under your own domain. Uh, you can see here, I've added my logo to this. This is what I look like when I'm sleeping. This is a fully functional site preview link. It'll show what the site will look like on all devices. It's clickable um, when it does load. And um, come, I think by the end of June, we're going to be releasing a feature I'm personally excited about, which is what we call site annotations. Um, so when you send a client a white label preview link of a site that's in design or needs approval, we need to iterate in the design. Instead of uh, you know, emailing them a link and going back and forth by phone or by email, you'll be able to send them this link and, and your clients will be able to mark up any site directly in the UI um, with comments and you'll be able to resolve those comments and, and change the look and feel um, directly in the UI and then send them a new white label preview link with the goal of publishing that site quicker and, um, and um, collaborating with your clients as well um, in, a, in a more like seamless and kind of native experience with them. So I think for now, um, we're going to open this, this thing back up for Q&A. Um, if we want to, you know, dump the widget builder or talk about our API, we can do that with Russ. Um, and then we can talk about what kind of support we offer the community as well. So I think we'll just open it up for questions right now. Okay. If you just go to the chat window, scroll to the top, and the questions should be fairly obvious for you there and just work through them top to bottom. Sure. Uh, I'll jump in and I'll, I'll take the first one. It's from uh, from Bill Frisco. The question is, if we edit the HTML in a widget, is that widget's control panel divorced from the widget? For example, we change a slider to display a random image to start the HTML. Can we use the control panel to turn the autoplay on and off? Or do we lose that connection to the HTML? So, so no, if, if you do go in and change the HTML or, or any of the styles of, of a widget, um, you're, you're not going to go and, and divorce it from the widget itself. So if you come in and try and make changes again uh, to, to the widget, uh, you're either going to overwrite those changes that you made by changing the, the widget, um, or um, you're going to just leave them the same as it was. And so it really depends on what change you're making. Um, it is totally possible for you to go in and break a widget uh, if, if you do go in and make changes that don't fit with our standard. Uh, so you do need to be a little bit careful. Um, as part of that, but you're not really divorcing it. You're not really separating it by, by changing the HTML. It's going to continue to work, you know, as a standard widget inside of the Duda platform. Adam, if you're looking for the chat window, you might have to click on the control bar in the bottom to expose it, or you might have to stop sharing your screen to see it. Cool. 
I'm going to continue to share my screen in case, you know, we answer a question, we need to, to cool. show something. So yeah, I can see the, the chat window now. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, I'll jump in on the next question as well. Um, and so the next question is from Mary is, can you change the template later on once the website is published? We have heard this is not possible with, with Duda, which is a worry for us. Um, so, so Mary, it, it, it's a very valid concern uh, from, from the Duda side. Um, yeah. Uh, today, uh, we, we, it is true that we don't allow you to change templates directly inside of the platform. Um, that being said, there are a few strategies you can impose to kind of work with this um, and, and drastically change the, the site design on yeah. the Duda site, right? So, so number one is, is, you know, the way we think about this is, is you know, we want to give you the tools to really change the website design and layout, you know, on the fly as you're designing the site. So, you know, once you kind of build a site from a template, it is kind of divorced from that original template selection. Um, and so, Adam, you can show it here. You can go in and actually change the layout to any one of our standard layouts that we support across the board. So, with just a few clicks, you can drastically change, you know, the layout and, and design of the website. Uh, you can also come in and add in new sections quickly, right? So you can drastically change and rebuild the site in a matter of minutes just by leveraging our, our sections components uh, to be able to quickly add a new new elements and new design standards into the site um, immediately. Duda is constantly updating our library of sections. We launched this uh, about five months ago, our sections, and we have over 150 sections at this point, and we constantly add more. So, so this is something that's going to constantly change and evolve with the platform. Um, and finally, um, if you really do need to change it, you really do need to start over, um, you know, we, we do allow you to do what's called like a, a reset on the website. Um, so you can go in and, and reset the site and choose a new template. And it's actually not going to affect the public site until you publish it again. Yeah. So, so you can go in and select a different template and, and kind of you will lose all your content, uh, but you can select a new template and build it out and then publish and change it for the customer uh, once you're ready. And we also, as part of that reset, we will create a backup of the website. So you can restore back and forth between that old version and that new version that you're, you're building um, going forward. So. Uh, Hopefully that answers your, your question, Mary, and, and hopefully gives you a little more reassurance uh, about how we handle things on the Duda side. I think the next one is, is there a lookup table widget that I can employ to create a cross-reference feature, <laughs> such as a list to, to list all houses in zip code 19446? <laughs> you want me to handle this one, Adam? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so Mark, you're asking uh, essentially for some type of database capability yeah. to be able to search for a zip code, uh, display results based on based on that search. Um, so so today, Duda does not have a capability of, of doing this directly um, on our side. Um, and so uh, the way we kind of think about this and the way we look at it um, is is that's kind of like database functionality which we don't have uh, access to, and it's going to be a little more advanced functionality uh, for for the website. Um, and so you know we we do have the capability of building your own widget, and so it would be possible to say create a widget where you input, you know, a list of 100 different locations, that widget might search, you know, on the fly when someone comes and searches for that zip code, uh, that would be possible. But it's not like filling in, you know, a lookup table directly, yeah. it's, it's composing a widget uh, that would exist and kind of fulfill that need. Of yeah. course, this is a pretty advanced use case uh, for doing this. Uh, and so, so it's, it's kind of like you have to think about it a little bit differently on the Duda side than you would on the DC side kind of going forward. Um, the multi -lo multi location widget act actually is 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 something that's it's similar to that that's right? similar to this yeah let me show you uh, I'll show you a multi location widget really quickly that's just out of the box um, in our widgets we do have a multi location widget which is uh, similar to what you're asking about but um, it's a, a way for multi location restaurants or or businesses to be able to display all of their locations and allow a user to be able to, or a visitor to find their nearest location. So I can add another location um, and then I can choose what structured data to actually display um, for that location. So I can enter in a new address. Let's say I add in um, my home. Okay, so I'm adding in my, my home and it's going to add a map element and I can go add an information about, let's say, this business, yeah. um, the location number, et cetera. 
and then I can backlink out to different individual web pages or landing pages for those those sections as well. Mm -hmm. But I can allow my site visitors to find that nearest location and display those that that business information for those locations. Yeah, this will actually use the GPS on your on your device to like find the nearest exactly. location to where yeah. you are. Yeah. 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 So let's see here. Next one, uh, next actual section. Sections are always for all sites, can't be just for single sites, right? So um, what Bill, Bill's asking, uh, basically when you build a section, mm -hmm. yeah, they're reusable across every site that you build. So you, yep. you, you, you build it once and then you can use it on site number three, number five, number 25, uh, wherever you want across the board. It's going to be available for all you, your team, your clients. Absolutely. Um, so it's definitely reusable across the board. Uh, Ray is saying, uh, we already signed up as a white label partner. So far it meets our needs and it's much easier than BC. I like that. <laughs> um, he's asking, how do we create a custom palette of colors per client? So, so on the data side, we don't have a, a concept that exactly relates to like a color palette. Yep. Uh, what we do have, and Adam, maybe you can pull this up, maybe like a edit the text of a, like an image or something. We do have what, what we call is the recent colors. Um, so if you just click on text and maybe just do like a change the color of it, right? And just show what that looks like, yeah. So we we store uh, on the Duda side, what are the most recent colors that you've used within the website? So if you've gone and, you know, in the, the contact form, you've decided to set the background of the contact form to be black and you have white text on top, we would have both black and white text uh, or black and white color options here. And so that's something your, your customers would also see the same colors of going forward, yeah. but it's not like a color palette that you've set for the site directly. I selected um, the red for that notification bar, so it's ex there. Exactly, yeah. right. Um, uh, and then on top of that, we do have this concept of global colors. So if you go into the global design colors, you can come and say, cool, the, the default font color is you know, uh, a dark gray. Uh, the default heading color might be a, uh, you know, a darker color that's black to stand out a little bit more. Things like this, you can set the global colors, which is obviously something we'd recommend. This is going to save you time throughout the site build. Um, and also, if your customers do come in and start adding their own you know, widgets and components, it's going to fit the style that you've already set. Um, so so that, that is a best practice. Um, but it's not the exact same as like a color palette style. So. Exactly. Just a different way of thinking about it. Absolutely. So Bill, um, multiple domains point to different start page per domain. So, so on our on on our side, we, we do have the, the capability of supporting um, multiple domains for the website. Um, so when you publish the site, there is an option to set. Uh, it's in the it's in the settings that says I want to add alternate domains or secondary domains, child domains, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Um, now we don't have a way to to link those to you know sub pages of the site um, or or different you know landing pages. Uh, the way you'd have to accomplish that would just be build separate websites and have separate domains for that. Um, so we don't have that capability uh, right now, uh, but we do support alternate domains. Barry says, nice. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> um, let's see, Mark, great question. What about EV SSL certificates? Right now we offer DV SSL certificates. Yes, that is correct. And I'm going to show you uh, where you find more information about that. Sorry, somebody's doing construction right over our heads. <laughs> so if you hear a pounding, that's not us. It's uh, construction. Um, we have a really great blog. A lot of uh, we're, we're releasing blog posts every week, and there's a great article on our SSL certificates and and why we partnered with Let's Encrypt about those, but we're offering domain um, domain level SSL certificates. Yeah. Um, right now, it's not possible to add an EV SSL certificate. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. To do the site. Yep. So that's that's the answer there, and I'll chat this to the group here. Yeah. Um, this blog post about our SSL certs. <clears throat> that of course took me to a different spot, Russ. If you want to read the next the question. Yeah. Sure. So uh, the, the next question uh, that we see here um, is from Mark in New Hampshire. Uh, I'm hearing that um, I can't edit the template once going live. Um, I'm, I'm not really clear on, on the question. I, I think uh, in general, uh, you know, we, we, when you build a site off of a template, um, you're creating like a copy of that template. And so we're not going to allow you to go and make an update to the template that will then impact the website, right? Um, that's very intentional on our side. We don't want to allow people to come in and, and change a template and then mess up, you know, a site they built two years ago. Um, and so we, we really separate the, these two concepts uh, going forward. 
you absolutely can go and update a site after you've created it. You can republish it, make changes if that's necessary. Uh, that, that's gonna, not going to be a problem. You could go into the global design layout settings and really change the look and feel of, of the nav and then republish. Yeah. Um, what we're also doing here in the background, which might answer part of your question, is we're actually running backups. So you can always revert or restore back to a, a prior version. So you can see here I entered developer mode to the code base and, and we created a backup here automatically, but you can also create manual backups. So yep. hopefully that, that's answering some of it. Cool. The next question is from Craig. Um, looks like about e-commerce. He's saying, are there any wholesale settings for e-commerce? So the answer uh, is, is yeah. Um, so in, inside of our e-commerce option, there, there is, this is a, it's only available on the 2,500 product tier, but we do have what we call um, is a bulk discounting. So if you buy multiple, uh, you can go in and, and have a, a discount that would be available uh, for if I bought 10 of these, the price per unit is gonna go down uh, by, by X amount. So yep. that's the way you'd manage that inside of e-commerce would be for, for kind of the wholesale pricing. Uh, on top of that, there is an option to do like kind of per user discounts as well. So if you wanted to have like a specific user that has discounts, that can be done in our e-commerce too. Yep. And here I'm, you can see how easy it is to add a store to any data site. Yep. Um, I'm launching a store and adding a store and I'm going to kind of like the management console here that'll be totally white labeled and, and very easy to use. So when that loads, we can show that. Yep. Uh, the next question is from um, Mark in New Hampshire again. Um, he's asking the question, is there a maximum number when adding locations to that, that widget? He's referring to the multi-location widget. Yep. Um, can I batch upload? Um, can I create my own widget, such as with PHP code? So let's answer one by one here. Um, so there is no, no limit uh, to what you can add in the multi-location widget. Um, you, know, you can add up to you know, as many locations as makes sense for the UI. Um, that would be the only limit is just, does this become unwieldy on the website? What's the experience for the user? Those type of things would be the limit that really is put in place there yeah. uh, and you'd want to think about. Um, um, we don't have a way to batch upload right now, such as CSV into, into the widget. Um, you can go in and synchronize this into the content library. Yeah. So if you went into the content library and said, you know, add one by one by one by different locations, that would automatically populate into the multi-location widget. Um, so you could certainly do that as well uh, if you wanted to. And finally, the, the last part of the question is, can I create my own widget? Uh, such as with PHP code. And so the answer is, is not with PHP. Um, our widgets are our front end code only. So that means they're, they're JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, and so we, we don't allow any kind of server side code or, or like, you know, kind of full back end access uh, to, to the website directly. It's just going to be uh, front end code. Yep. Um, Daniel asked, what are the different white label partner plans? Any partner fees? Um, Let's see here, I'm actually gonna go launch our plans page here. So right on our plans page, we give you um, the different plans that we offer. Um, it's loading slowly, so here. So um, it, it's generally, you're gonna pay an annual subscription to get access to the white label platform. You get, with that, you get like priority phone support and email support. You actually get due to humans on the phone. They're fully proficient on the platform. Uh, that's Monday through Friday, 18 hours a day. Um, and you get email ticket support for non-urgent issues. We're going to answer those email tickets in, in about two to four hours. Our rolling average is around an hour. Um, and then it's around, then we charge per published site. We do offer specials for, like special discounts for the BC community, um, especially since so many of them have been becoming due to pros and partners. And um, we do have a dedicated landing page where you can ask additional questions, get some sort of special coupon code you can redeem to get discounts. Um, and I'm gonna go chat this to the group and um, we welcome you to go um, contact the partner team there. Um, let's see here. In addition, for our higher volume customers that are building you know, five, 10, 20 websites per month, we do have an enterprise plan. And based on the resources required, whether you need API access or whether you feel like your team needs a one-on-one -on -one kind of platform training and support, then we can talk um, talk to you there as well, and, and feel free to to contact us there or on the on the landing page as well. Cool. Um, so the next question is from uh, looks like from Marty Bailey. He's asking, is there a way to create a landing page within the website that will not show up as part of the web page or part of the navigation? Um, E.g., it's invisible when browsing the website, 
but the way the customer implements a sales tool and, and hosts it on their website without paying for two websites. So yeah, um, this is definitely something you can accomplish within the tool um, directly. And Adam's gonna, gonna show you here in real time. What he's gonna do is he's gonna add a new page to the site. This will be the landing page site, uh, whatever you might wanna let it be. Um, he'll add it. And then the next step that he's gonna go through here is he's gonna come in and hide this page uh, for all uh, different devices. So he's gonna click and, and say, great, I don't want this navigation link to show on desktop, tablet, or mobile. Um, he'll say hide on all, and that'll just remove it. Now, this is still a part of the site. Um, it still can be found online, uh, but he's not gonna go and it's not gonna be able to, to be browsed to directly unless someone has that direct link to the URL which he just said. And I'm just uh, updating the, the URL. Yep. Full flexibility over the meta information, uh, header HTML, et cetera. And I can choose to index or not index, of course. You're not gonna wanna index it. Yeah, probably the last thing you'd wanna do for the landing page is just hide the header on that page. Yep, absolutely. Right? Um, so you, like on the landing page, you don't wanna have standard navigation, you wanna have specific call to actions, things like this that might be a little bit different. Yep. <clears throat> okay, um, let's see here. Donation widget. You wanna show the PayPal widget? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a PayPal widget right out of the box. Um, that you can add to any website. Should be in our uh, business yep. there if you find it. Go for it. <laughs> cool, so, so yeah, the, the, the PayPal widget, it's pretty straightforward, just come and set it up. You can even change the type of transaction to be donate rather than buy. Um, so, so depending on what you want it to say, and, and then this would just be simple, you put a little text around it that says, you know, donate $25, donate $100, whatever it might be and collect it through PayPal directly. Yep. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah. uh, the next question is uh, from Craig. Uh, is it possible to bulk upload products into the store via CSV or similar? Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. There, there's a CSV import. Uh, you can come in and import things like whatever the SKU number is, the price, images, product name, description, uh, a lot of different options uh, from an import uh, capability. And so, so yeah. I think that's, that's the most practical way to probably manage this with your customers is have your customers send you a big list of, you know, a big list from a CSV or an Excel file and, and then go and upload it into the platform. Yep. Um, what is the issue with the SSL on the Internet Explorer? Will this be fixed? I am not familiar with that issue. Me neither. Uh, if, if, if there's a problem here, you know, reach out to us or let us know if there, there's a specific issue. I know we don't support really old versions of IE, like IE 8 with our SSL and older. Uh, but that's less than, you know, less than 0.1% of the web today. Um, so I'm not too worried about that one. Um, so if, if there is a specific issue, please let us know and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Are there member pages or secure zones? Well, you can add a password to any page. Um, we don't have like membership login functionality. Um, do you want to talk about secure zones, Russ? <laughs> secure zones? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so the closest thing we have is just the, pay, the, the password connected pages. Yeah. We, we don't have a concept on our side of memberships or logins or you know, specific pages uh, directly. You can password protect the page. It's not gonna be unique to every visitor. It's gonna be across the entire site. Across the entire, you know, the entire site, yeah. absolutely. We, we have had customers who have used this where you know, they, they, like a photographer came in and used this and for each client, they would come and add a new page and upload you know, the individual photos to that page directly and then set a specific password for that page for the right client. Uh, we've seen that use case be used before, um, but um, not a lot of other, other ones. All right, uh, let's see here. We've had really bad experiences with PayPal donations. Um, that's a widget that we offer out of the box. We yeah. have fulfillment partners that have created their own widgets sure. and used our widget builder to do so. Those are fully supported on our platform. They're not gonna break like the WordPress world or something like that. Um, one of our fulfillment partners is the camel. I'm showing you that they've created a what they call a widget workshop Where they use our widget builder to create their own widgets that will be native to the Duda experience and here They may have a donation widget um, If not, you can use our widget builder to build any kind of number of donation widgets. They have they don't uh, I don't know if web act has one um, Yeah, I, I don't I can't think of anything else off the top of my head I'm sure there are other like embed codes out there m5 um, or yeah, mgive. Mgive is probably one. I'm sure they have one. Yep. Um, I know um, there's a Power.io has a, yep. a widget that you could embed into the site using just our standard HTML uh, that'll collect money from folks. Um, so, so that's another option. So 
There are always other ways to, to get these donations too, besides PayPal. How do you add your resources, images, video, and can you use external resources? So adding images is very simple on our platform. If I go into the content library, I'm gonna go to the image picker. I can upload images. Um, I can do that directly from my computer. Um, I can upload from Facebook or from Dropbox, um, Instagram and more. Um, so adding images is very simple. Um, the, right now, uh, adding a video background in Duda is, it requires them to be hosted elsewhere uh, on YouTube or Vimeo. So you can add a video background to any row, to any, like, uh, and, and that has to be hosted on YouTube or Vimeo. Um, what else? Can you use external sources? Yeah, I think I, I covered that. Yeah, go for it. Um, cool. So, so the next question was from Patrick. Um, he was asking, um, do you allow any other payment gateways? So, so for our e-commerce module, absolutely. Uh, we have over 50 different payment gateways that are available um, today. Um, this ranges from PayPal to Stripe, Authorize.net to Global Gateway, um, even ones in, in you know, Australia, like I'm trying to think off the top of my head, eWay is a big one out of Australia that we have. I pay 88. Um, yeah, all. There, there's a bunch that we have inside of the, the platform. I'm gonna go um, chat the, the links of the e-commerce uh, features. Yeah, so, so you can see the list here uh, of all the different ones. And so uh, we, we certainly have a lot. Photo gallery, um, let's go add a photo gallery. So we have a really robust like photo gallery widget. I'm gonna go back to like the homepage. Let's go to a news page. I'll add in a photo gallery widget or just show you this. This is actually one of our most flexible widgets that it we is. have is our photo gallery. We, we put a lot of time and a lot of effort into this one. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty great. Great, so I'm gonna go to the widgets and gallery widget. So I'm gonna add a gallery to the website. Here are the starter images that come with that gallery, but really um, adding, changing the look and feel of the design is very simple in Duda, right here. Um, adding overlays like text button overlays or hovers or even some sort of animation is very simple in the platform as well. Or in the, in the and you can display a certain number of rows, um, you can change the text position, um, and you have full flexibility over kind of animation, right? Yeah. As well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very simply done. Cool. All right. Yeah. So the next question is from Patrick, who's asking where your web server data center is located. So we host um, uh, on Amazon Web Services. Uh, so everything is based out of their, their U.S. East location, which is in Virginia. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the primary data, the database, the application servers, all the technical stuff is there. Uh, we do use their CDN uh, for static resources. So things like images, CSS files, uh, JavaScript files are uploaded to the CDN. So they are gonna be served locally to wherever the, the customer is coming from on the website. And, and as you guys know, images and JavaScript, these are the, the primary weight of the website. So where all the download comes in, and that's gonna be the biggest thing. So, so we do use the CDN for that to make sure things are, are nice and speedy um, kind of going forward. Great. Uh, next question is, uh, is there a list of your third party vendors you deal with for widgets, templates, et cetera? Uh, we do have a, you know, on our, our newer website that we just launched, we do have a full list of site widgets. Um, so this will list some of the integrations that we have out of the box, but those widgets um, are also just listed here. And, and we do have a list of the vendors that we have integrated with here. We're pretty transparent about who we've integrated with. Yeah. Do we have something a little bit easier to access than this? Um, I may be on the support sorry. portal. I don't know. Uh, okay. Maybe on the support portal. Yeah. I'm going to go slack this link or chat this link to the group. Yeah. I, I think this is also um, like, you know, wh wh who else do we have from like a fulfillment perspective to build these widgets or build templates? Uh, like we have, a, we have a fulfillment channel, right? Yeah. So the next question is how do I find out more information about the fulfillment channel? Yeah. Which is going to be in this resources section right on our homepage fulfillment channel. And this is where we're very transparent about the agencies that use Duda to run their entire businesses and kind of fulfill the demand of our other agency partners that don't want to focus on design. Maybe they want to focus on, um, maybe they want to focus on lead gen and acquisition and outsource their design or they need help designing a, a widget for their, mm -hmm. for their instance or for, for a particular customer, here is the link to the fulfillment channel where you can contact our fulfillment partners directly. Yep. So that answers the question from Art as well. Uh, Art and Marty asked it the same question at the same time. Um, cool. Uh, Barry, <laughs> Barry is asking, um, bulk image uploads for galleries. Yeah, certainly. 
So when you do upload images, you can select as many images as you want to upload at once. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, we're not going to limit the number of images that you try and upload to the platform. Uh, that, that's going to be just fine. And that's just part of our, our standard image library and image gallery. Uh, uh, the other question is about alt text. Yeah, editing the alt text on any image is very simple. You can click on the image, you can edit the alt text. It's, we give you full flexibility over yeah. description <laughs> and alt text, right? Yeah, right. any time that, that we, we present an image on the website, yeah. we're going to give you options to set the alt tag. Uh, that's just part of our platform and, and how we think about SEO uh, going forward. So, so we know that's important. Uh, Craig is asking, any migration tools, guides, services from, from suitable BC sites to do that? Okay, um, I know that our VP of customer success is looking into this now. So I think Barb has sent us a list of BC partners and the websites that they've, they've built. And I think he's evaluating this with our product team now. So, um, you know, if we get a list of, of people that are interested in that, we can go keep them posted. Right now, we just made a big push to go comply with GDPR. Um, and our product team is going to be freed up in about a week. Not necessarily freed up, but have a little bit more time to not worry about meeting our uh, the May 25th deadline of, yeah. of complying with you know European guidelines and security and data privacy. So um, you know definitely that's a question we're looking into, Craig, and it's going to be important for us as well. So we can keep you posted, and, and Kendi and me and, and everybody can keep you in the loop on that. Yep. Um, all right. Thanks. Very cool. Thanks. Uh, is there any way to bulk upload redirects? Really good question. Right now, no. Um, here in our global settings in our platform, this is where you'd set those URL redirects. And this is something that we want to look into and make easier for, for our agency partners, but right now you can't. Yeah, it's one by one today. One by one. Yep. Uh, the next question is from Mary. Um, she's asking, oh yes, and what about sitemap files? So this good is question. something that the Duda platform handles for you. Uh, we're going to automatically generate uh, a sitemap file for every single page of your website, or I should say an entry into that file for every single page uh, in your website. Um, we also are automatically going to submit that sitemap to Google, to Bing, to ask search engines every time you publish. So we're going to tell Google uh, to crawl the site as fast as possible uh, as well. So, so that's something that's going to be natively handled as, as part of the platform. You don't need to worry about creation of the sitemap. Yeah, great question, Mary. I'm going to send you a list of all of our features, you know, that align kind of with the SEO. Yeah. We signed on to Duda with the pro plan. We'll be moving about 22 sites over from BC. Woohoo! It's great to hear, Art. Thanks, Art. Um, did we catch up? Did we catch up? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I know, I know you're... I think uh, I think you're all caught up, and it's good because we're just just about out of our regular time. Although often we'll stay later if people have questions. Yeah, great. Dang. Uh, <laughs> I think we want to remind you. You know, we hear the pain. We know it's it's frustrating for everybody. We do have a, a landing page, so if you want additional one-on-one -on -one time or to contact us directly, um, we will distribute this. You know, this landing page link again, and. Additionally, I think, you know, things that are very important to the, the BC community are support. Um, you know, so we do offer that phone support. You can get a duty human, a duty human and a duty employee <laughs> proficient on the platform. We are human. Yeah, we are human. <laughs> 3 a.m. To, to 9 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. So depending on your time zone, that'll change. Uh, we have a few international phone numbers as well. I think mm -hmm. UK, Australia, Tel Aviv. We have a team in Tel Aviv and in the US to cover various time zones in Colorado and Palo Alto. Um, and then email ticket support, of course, is what you get. Um, and again, that fulfillment partner, partner uh, channel. So any extensibility or flexibility you need to build out on the platform in the form of a widget, you know, there are our fulfillment uh, channel partners should really have you covered. Um, any outsourced development um, have you covered there. Some of our fulfillment partners actually build out themes and templates as well that you can purchase and reuse over and over again. Um, so that could really help you out in, in getting up to speed on, on Duda. I spoke with the Duda support person today. She was very helpful. Excellent. That's great feedback. I know Adad, our VP of customer success, will like that. Um, the support has been expanding and they speak English. That's great. I think some of our support folks speak German and, and, and Hebrew and English and Japanese and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Portuguese and Spanish. So Spanish, yeah. yeah, 
yeah. But, but to set expectations, we, you know, English is what we, <laughs> in our terms and conditions, is what we provide, right? English support. Yes. Si, senor. Good. Thanks, Ray. Excellent. Cheers. We got to go. Um, excellent. Well, from these due to humans, uh, to you guys, to the BC humans, uh, really appreciate your time. Really appreciate everybody, Craig and Dave, bringing this together and, and getting everybody organized and, and on the call. And if you want us to um, you know, present in a couple weeks the next sand pile, we're, we're happy to do that anytime. And Kendi and or I will, will distribute this agenda with some of the links as well. Yeah, perfect. And I've uh, captured the links you put into the chat, which I'll put into the sand pile meeting notes as well for folks if, uh, because the chat for whatever reason does not make it through the recording. So I'll, I'll take care of that. Awesome. Thanks very much. I uh, appreciate the time, especially with all three of you there. And, and uh, that I thought it was just a great presentation. It really gives you a nice overall summary of, of the DUDA platform. And uh, hopefully folks will find some answers that they're looking for. Yeah, thank great. you. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much, everyone. And thanks for your time today. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone. Bye.